Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Daily Race. So glad to be with you this morning as we are starting our day with the Lord. We are uh, being intentional and taking our first steps uh, of the day with Him, um, whether that's live at 6 a.m. or maybe you're catching this a little bit later. But we are being intentional, uh, taking steps forward each day. Um, not worried about running a marathon today, not running sprints today, just taking one step forward. And we've been studying uh, kind of big picture of what we've been studying is the Lord's Supper, that conversation he had with his disciples. And what we've been doing for the last couple of days here is, is going deep on his teaching uh, about servant leadership. And we kind of backed up a little bit to a passage that took place just previous that week when Jesus was having a little bit deeper of a conversation or, or just another uh, kind of view of this conversation about servant leadership as James and John's mom come to essentially ask for her sons to get a promotion with Jesus. Didn't go over well uh, with the other disciples. They're upset. Uh, but today we're going to look at Jesus' response. His first response is, are you willing to suffer? Uh, but his second response is to tell you what true leadership is. So let's read it here. It says this. Uh, Jesus called them together. So the ten disciples are upset that, you know, uh, James and John's mom came. Uh, James and John, I'm not sure where they're at. Maybe off to the side, kind of embarrassed that their mom came or um, their mom's cooking them something good to eat because that's what moms do. I, I don't know what's happening, but anyways, Jesus calls them all together. He brings them all, the 10 that are upset, the two that were kind of vying for a position. And he says this, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their high offices exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Jesus says that the way to work to the top, uh, the way to work to the position of greatest influence, of, of greatest leadership, is to work your way to the bottom. You get to the top by going to the bottom. Uh, the way that you lead is by serving. I've had, uh, I was counted up this morning uh, as I was thinking about this passage here. I've, I've had five different jobs uh, since I started working, five different jobs. I worked uh, at a summer camp, I worked at the airport for Airborne Express, I worked at an engineering company, um, I worked for Palm Valley Church, and I worked for Shoney's, and Shoney's was in there somewhere. So not a whole lot of different bosses that I've had over the years. And I just got to sit back and think about those different areas and, and think about the my direct supervisors, the, the people that, that coached me and led me. And I've had the privilege of having some, some great leaders in my life. Uh, three of the, the five, um, bosses that I've had, I would say would be uh, great examples of servant leadership. Uh, but yeah, they directed me. We had to get the job done, right? Like <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, the, the dinner had to get out for all the kids up at summer camp. At the end of the day, we have to produce things and uh, make sure that we follow up on contacts here at the church and uh, do ministry. But how we go about doing it, how I was led to do those things, were led by some really godly men and women over the years that, that poured into me and cared about me personally, um, were willing to step in and help me. And I have some great examples of that. Uh, I've also had some examples of people that really didn't care that much about Ryan as an individual. They were more concerned about getting the job done and you know turning the profit for themselves. Uh, we see this all the time. I'm not sure what your breakdown was. If you look at the ways of the world, what you would say, does, does it tilt in the favor of servant leadership or self-centered leadership. I'm pretty sure it tilts in the, in the direction of self-centered leadership because it's not just um, it's not just a business, right? It's just not our, our work areas that, that there's leadership. There's leadership in our government uh, that goes all the way from you know people in positions of you know actual you know leadership in government to uh, departments that provide services and bureaucracies and all those types of things. You know, people have any bit of influence. Uh, what do they use that for? To make their life easy or to make the lives easy of the people that they're serving? Is it self-centered leadership or is it other-centered leadership? And Jesus points out to the disciples, is like, we can, we can pick examples all day long about how this goes poorly, about the damage that it causes, uh, about the hurt and pain, the, the, the people who are trampled on because of this type of leadership. But for you, for, for, for my kingdom, it's different. Leaders serve. If you want to be first, you have to be last. 
If you want to be at the front of the line, you have to race to the back of the line to get there. That's what servant leadership is, and that's what Jesus is calling his disciples to. So I would encourage you this morning, and this might be a great exercise. I think I'm going to do this later today as well. I want you to write a note. Uh, write a note to someone that is a great servant leader, uh, someone that maybe it's a boss in your past, someone that you, know, you served under, maybe you serve under right now, or maybe you served under years ago, and just thank them for their leadership and why it's made an impact on you and point out how uh, it models Jesus's style of leadership. Um, we can focus on the negative because I'm sure we could write way more negative letters than we could write positive ones, but I would encourage you, let's pick someone positive and more than that, let's put it into practice. What are some changes that we need to make to make sure that we're leading in those types of ways? And we all have opportunity to do that because it's not just positional leadership, it's how we treat people. Treat people that are serving us. When we go to the grocery store, when we order out, when we go to a restaurant, when we go to the grocery store, the people there that are, are serving, that are helping us out, how do we treat them? Do we treat them like they exist for our pleasure, for our benefit, or do we treat them as other human beings and, and coming alongside them and helping them to have just as great of a day as, as we're having or help them to not have as bad of a day as we're having? Uh, let's be intentional about that today. All right, let's pray. Lord, we love you, and we just thank you uh, for your, your way of, of leading. And not just that you live this way, God, but you called us to live this way, to lead this way, to treat others uh, better than ourselves. God, this is a complete, this is countercultural to the world that we live in. We know there are way more people headed in the opposite direction of this. But help us to be courageous. Help us to have trust that, that if we do it this way, if we follow your lead in this way, it will be benefit us. It will work out. Uh, that you will, will guide and direct our steps. You will open up doors and, and make things possible for us. That you will be our protection and provision. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. And I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.